What, you think you're ready for the apocalypse? If you're not cultivating your own ginger, you are sorely mistaken, my friend. This is Praxis and in this video I'm going to be planting ginger. These are some ginger roots that I grabbed from the grocery store. They're not organic, they're just you know the regular ginger roots that you find in the uh, produce department and I've been watering them in this container for a while and you can see they're starting to get little buds on the tips there. They're swelling here and here and this one down here. Has a bunch of little uh, light colored swollen areas at the tip, so it seems like it's uh, beginning to grow. Really good one down here. And uh, now I'm going to be putting them into soil. The reason I didn't put them in soil initially was just because I've been kind of busy and I was delaying. So, what I was doing each day, kind of the way that I work with uh, sprouts, my uh, green sprouting, like alfalfa sprouts and things like that, is I would uh, just put some water in here, you know, run water over it, swish it around, and dump it out and I leave this damp cloth on top of it. I've done that for a couple of weeks and that brings me to where they are right now. Now I finally have the time so I'm going to be putting them into some dirt. Uh, what I'm using for that is just this tray. This is the drainage tray at the bottom of a seed starting uh, set that I've got. I'm not sure if this is really the ideal situation because the drainage is going to be a little wonky with it but uh, it's a, it's a good size, a good shape, and uh, you know, I'm going give it a give it a run. So before I put these in, I'm going to put in a little bit of dirt. I've got two different types of soil that I'm using. Uh, one type of soil is this light, fluffy, kind of peat-based uh, potting soil mix. I've gotten some termites into this recently, so I, I, the reason they're in pots is that I put them in my sun oven to bake them. Having sun ovens or, or just a car during the summertime is a great way of sterilizing things. I know. In the past, once I'd gotten some weevils into rice that I'd had, and I just put it in the car in the summer uh, for several days, and that baked all the weevils to death. So, uh, you know, being able to sanitize things with heat is oftentimes a really great way of doing it because it's as opposed to doing it chemically, you know, that would leave residues. Just uh, cooking everything uh, makes it sanitized, so you're not going to have the termites in here anymore. But uh, you know, no other downside. So I'm going to start dumping these in. The other type of soil I'm using is this coast of Maine. Uh, it's kind of like a, it's like a garden bed mix that you could just grow things in directly. This stuff's a little bit fluffy and uh, this stuff's a little bit uh, dense. So I thought kind of a mixture. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's on camera. Uh, kind of held together is kind of a baked chunk right up until it came over the edge. Well, you saw it. You saw what happened. We all saw it. <laughs> all right, let me get up and brush myself off a little bit here. Ugh. Try to preserve as much of this as I can. Um, just brush this down. The rest of it I can just brush down underneath the decking here. Not a big deal, but I want to preserve what I've got. It's interesting. This soil has a, uh, a fresh baked goods kind of smell to it. I guess organic matter of any type that you, uh, that you bake has kind of a similar smell to it, whether it's brownies or uh, potting soil. Okay, uh, so I've got a little bed there, and uh, that's maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch deep. And I'm going to take these guys and put them in. I don't honestly know which way's up on these. I'm going to presume maybe that there's not enough. So I'm going to put one here. This one's uh, a little bit fatter. I think I'll put that one like that, and then this one over on this side. This one's got a little growth area on the on that side, so I think I'll put that facing up. All right, and this goes to the side. I'll put a little bit more of this potting soil around them, being a little bit more cautious this time. And uh, and then I thought I'd take some of that Coast of Maine garden soil and use that to fill in the rest of this. As I understand it, uh, it's good to water these things and keep them pretty moist uh, at the beginning. Uh, and then when you want them to start really growing, uh, you know, their, uh, their shoots to come up, you want to cut back on the watering and, and let the area kind of dry out a little bit. At least that's uh, what my research has suggested to me. There we go. Kind of just going over the whole area. This doesn't really necessarily even need to be uh, 
flat and level, although it would be easier to water, I guess, if it's level. I'm excited about the ginger because uh, ginger's got a lot of health benefits. Uh, there's more and more studies coming out all the time about the health benefits of ginger. Whenever you can get your stuff uh, fresh, that always tends to be better, uh, both for health benefits and also just for uh, cost. If you're growing it yourself, you know, I bought this ginger here that I'm planting, but if this works out successfully, I am done paying for ginger for the rest of my life because I can just keep uh, propagating this. Uh, if this goes well and I get a bunch of uh, sprouts, you'll see updates here on the channel about how, uh, how this is all going. But uh, I've seen a lot of videos, which you can search up here on YouTube if you want to kind of fast forward into the future of what this is looking like. Uh, overall, it seems like ginger is a pretty easy thing to cultivate. And uh, having the greenhouse here, as I do, uh, it's going to give me an opportunity to protect it during the winter and uh, just kind of have it keep going and going and going. I'm here in uh, New England, and in New England we, you know, we're like somewhere like zone four to zone six in New England in terms of our, our growing zones. We will routinely get below zero uh, Fahrenheit in the uh, in the winter time, but here in the greenhouse, we barely touch freezing in here. There's, uh, in fact, last winter there were just two nights where it just uh, touched freezing down in here. Otherwise, the greenhouse does pretty well. There's a citrus tree uh, growing right here. Behind it, there's an avocado tree. Uh, and uh, the grass kind of grows uh, all throughout the winter. We're having a little bit of an issue right now with the grass. I don't know if, you can, if it shows up too much on camera. It's not super green. It seems like a little bit of like a kind of a fungus or a mold growing in here. Um, we do have constant fans, which actually turns on right now, which is going to make the audio terrible. We'll just finish up. We do have a fan that runs in here, uh, and that uh, you know, helps in, uh, you know, with uh, keeping airflow and keeping things from getting moldy, but still we're having some issues here. I just recently, yesterday, started aerating the soil with, pit, with a pitchfork, and I'm hoping that that's really going to help. But I think that the soil may just kind of get compacted down, and we water with gray water, so the soil was, I think, maybe just getting a little bit anaerobic underneath. So, uh, you know, it's a constant learning experience, and that's one of the things I love about prepping and preparedness and homesteading, is you have this constant experiment that you can try throughout your life of, you know, learning how to do things better and better, given your own personal circumstances. I know the audio is probably pretty lousy with this fan, so I'm going to wrap it up here, and I will do updates. If, uh, well, either way, if this thing becomes like a total flop and I made a huge mistake, I'll let you know. And if it's a big success, I'll let you know that also. That's it, and thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.